following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. You had, of course, to uh, meditate a lot on that, right? More meditation, because this is a sacred book, and as uh, I said uh, to you in the beginning, it relates with the work that we have to do inside. All of these personages that you find in this movie are archetypes that we have within. And uh, in synthesis, is the path of the Bodhisattva that uh, has to renounce everything in order to enter into what in Kabbalah is called the Absolute, which is which was the final ordeal we will say for Yuristira, that is the king. Yuristira represents the complete awakening of the consciousness is what in alchemy is called the auric embryo. To achieve that, that we see at the end here, is not easy. You made uh, in tweet all the work that we had to do by watching this uh, movie. So you have questions? Yeah? Well, uh, it's not that failed. It's this part of the consciousness that Arjuna, of Arjuna. By Arjuna uh, throwing the arrow, shooting the arrow, it means that it's that part of, of himself that is being liberated. You have to understand that each part of this uh, is, uh, as I said, it's an archetype. And uh, when you see Arjuna doing it, and, and she is be, uh, beside him. It is because uh, she is doing it through him. This is a, a type of uh, development that we have to acquire. <coughs> to understand that is with the heart, of course. The, the one that made the movie, uh, as you read the Mahabharata, obviously it's Arjuna, the one that shoots the arrow but because she is there. Hmm? So you have to analyze that. If she is not there, he cannot do it. It's a type of r renunciation, right? Renunciation. Is. And obviously, uh, the whole thing is uh, uh, synthesized in what in esotericism is called Inferno Gods. You see, there are two types of initiates or masters in the path. We always talk about the spiral path and the direct path. The spiral path are related, of course, with uh, those people that uh, are very attached to their ego. In that they disintegrate their ego little by little, and while they do a little work in one life, they enter again into nirvana. 
That's why in the end, Yudhisthira is finding them and says, why are these people doing here in, in, in heaven? And meanwhile, he found his relatives in hell. Because a bodhisattva in itself is an infernal god, meaning that because of his love to humanity, he renounces heaven in order to help the demons. Jesus is an infernal god. Uh, Krishna is another infernal god. All those gods that uh, are, do not renounce happiness are there, and they don't care about all of us. But the great avatars renounce that and come here in order to show us the path to go up. Like Mohammed is an infernal god. Moses is another infernal god. Great prophets, this is how you call them. And that's why when you investigate the life of all of them, it's very strange, always associated with darkness. Because in infernal God, all infernal gods are beyond good and evil. And the spiral gods are only, in, are only how you call it, trapped in good. And you see that uh, when he was dying, that, uh, how you call it? you You Shastana, I guess is the name. This is all the guy is telling, I did this, and I killed this, and he says, good, good, good. Yeah, but an infernal God is beyond that, good and evil. No, so that teaches that we don't have stuck, neither in good, neither in evil. Remember the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You have to go beyond that. But that's only four great niches. Now... Down here, we are s stuck in evil. <coughs> Later on, we are going to be stuck in good. But not now. <laughs> what is your question? Yeah, it's, uh, all of us, when we start awakening, we discover that we have a lot of secrets of darkness. And many parts of us awaken darkness. Those parts are uh, elements that believe that uh, they should be alive because they have power. And uh, those who want to be liberated from darkness, only Christ can help them by annihilating those powerful elements that we have within, or demons in our heart. And by working with the powers of Lucifer. Because as we uh, stated, according to my understanding here, Karna, the one that is a brother of the five, but is working against them, is uh, Lucifer part of the being, because in many lectures we explain that Satan or Lucifer is just a shadow of the Logos, and he always do his work, but in the other side. Yeah, he uses and pushes all the egos and the stera that we have within with temptation in order for us to defeat that and to win. So that's his work. And the land that he has, of course, is because uh, his father, he says, is the son, as you end, right? Of course, uh, Lucifer has the power of the sun, which is in us, the sexual power, the sexual energy. You have to meditate in that. In the end, he is together with all the brothers. What uh, in esotericism we say is that in the end, uh, the devil or Satan, in other words, or Lucifer, as you call it, is absorbed by God. 
when he finished his job, which is the complete annihilation of all the ego. If we have any atom of ego, whether it is an ego of lust, anger, pride, vanity, etc., Lucifer is still there as a tempter. But when we, through meditation and techniques that we know, finally annihilate, if we are completely clean, then there is no more work for temptation there. So then the, it's finished. So the sun, the logos, absorbs it, the shadow, which is in, this, in this case is karna. But the one that defeats that is the willpower, which is Arjuna. It's a complete battle against oneself. Oneself against oneself. And you understand that only when you sit down and meditate in your own defects and vices. Who is comprehending your defects? You are comprehending your defects. Who is asking for annihilation? You are asking for annihilation of that which is you. And the power that destroys that is the lens, which is a sexual power, which is the power of your own God. Only by studying deeply alchemy and Kabbalah is how you understand this, because this is also written in the Bible in other ways. Read the five books of Moses, and you find there all the work. When Moses is trying to defeat the Pharaoh, and God tells him, I will make the heart of Pharaoh like a rock, so you can work against it. So God is in both sides, right? What is God doing with that play, right? Is making diamond soul. A diamond soul is what your inner God wants. And this is something that uh, you understand when you work in yourself. Then you understand that good and evil, I said, there is no man that is completely good, nor is a man that is completely bad. There is always bad and good, and good, I mean, bad and good, and good and bad. That's why we have to go beyond that. And in order to go beyond that, we have to start recognizing that we are stuck, sink, sank into evil. We are not good. Right now we are evil. Or you consider a good people. Look how, what are we doing with this planet. If we were good, this planet will be different. But uh, we are destroying the earth, the water, the air, and we are destroying each other. Why? Because we are not big ship. So we have to recognize that in order to change. To turn into good people. And when we turn into good, we have to go beyond that. Because those that defeat evil and reach the level of human being, they are tempted by the gods that are beyond humanity. Yeah? How do we start? How do we start? We start by working in ourselves, by knowing ourselves. Because that's the work, to know yourself. Well, that is the beginning and the end of everything. Man, know thyself, and you will know the universe and the gods. So we have to know ourselves. Remember, when somebody asks us, who are you? We actually always name, oh, my name is this. No, I didn't ask for your name. I asked, who are you? And he says, well, I am a human being. And then we said, I don't think so. You think that you are a human being. But we are not but we can become a human being if we defeat the animal that we are because we are intellectual animals. We have a lot of animal in us. Lust, anger, greed, pride, vanity, laziness, gluttony, 
that is animal. Conventional psychology call it human defects. No, they are animal defects. When we defeat that, we can reach the level of human being. Human being is that which is united with the spirit, the being, the real self. Human beings never kill each other, respect the life of other creatures, beginning with their own uh, species. So, I think about that Arduino's son. No, okay. Is he just the spark that continues, I guess? Yeah. yeah. The unit says death doesn't exist. Because in reality, what you call psychological death is a psychological transformation. Remember that Einstein uh, stated, matter is never destroyed. It's transformed into energy, and energy into matter. Unfortunately, because our ignorance, we transform the creative energy into something that is really negative matter. Because inside of us, we have a lot of negative matter, which is not physical, but it's protoplasmic, ego. Lust is a false crystallization of energy. Hatred is a false crystallization that everyone has within. Greed, gluttony, laziness, all of that are false crystallization that we did because of our ignorance. So if we start transforming lust into chastity, anger into love, greed into happiness for the good of others, or what we call philanthropy, laziness into diligence, gluttony into temperance, not only in the physical level, but in all the levels of the being, which are 49. To transform all of that is Patience. With patience, you will possess all of those parts of the soul which are trapped into the defects and vices. And that's the work that we do. That's the work, the doctrine that we teach. Books are written about it because it's a very long path, a very long journey. And uh, what we have to do is just to start. And as we walk, the comprehension and understanding of the whole work that we have to do is showing unto us according to our level. Can it be accomplished in one lifetime? Oh, yes. If you dedicate that life exclusively to that work. But remember that Jesus Christ said, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon in Aramaic means wealth. So you cannot serve God and money. That means that people said, I will start doing this serious work after I have a house or after I save a certain amount of money. And they waste their time, their life, by doing that. And that's why those that uh, achieve the great work in one life, sometimes they, they have not even where, where to fall dead. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they have, sometimes they don't have. Because they are dedicated only to the work in themselves. If you are capable of doing that, yeah, in one life. If not, there are other initiatives that do it in many lives. They reincarnate and keep doing their work. Like, for instance, the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama is an initiate that was born and did a lot of work in past lives. And now he's keep doing his work, internal work, by helping his people. But eventually he will die. And whatever level he achieved in this life, 
he will continue doing it in another life. That is his path. But as I said, there are great masters that do it in one life. Like Jesus, like Moses, like Krishna. Eh? But they are very rare. Yeah, but if they did it, we can do it too. It's just willpower to dedicate ourselves to that. Uh, I advise you, if you can find the other, I mean, to watch the whole thing is, is better from the very beginning. The other two CDs. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's the whole. It's a is a is an English. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, of course. If you want to buy the Mahabharata as well, that will take you a long time to read it. <laughs> so it's very it's longer than the Bible. It's a lot. Is the longest poem ever written? That's what it said, right? So, do you have any other question? That is, yeah? Krishna was renowned for his holiness. That's why he received immortality. So, why does he have to die? Because uh, there are certain parts of us that are immortal, parts of, uh, parts of God within. Like uh, in the war against us, we had to renounce to omnipotence. Mm -hmm. And that is the power that Bhishma has, omnipotence. Omnipotence. Yeah. Omni omnipotence. You see, in, in Spanish, omnipotencia, the same word. Same, uh, I mean, different uh, accent. That's why I always mix Spanish with English when the word comes from the same Latin root. Anyhow, so that's the answer. You have to renounce that when you have it. <laughs> right? Of course, uh, in order to acquire that power, you have to go a long path. There are many gods that still are entangled in the karma of the universe. And they cannot go into the bosom of the Father because they are stuck and attached to omnipotence. Omnipotence. Yeah. When nine, you said number nine is related with the ninth sphere, is related with life. Nine. Remember that nine months is the baby in the womb. But there's not a record uh, night uh, ages remain the universe within the womb of the mother's space. But we have to understand this. Krishna is Christ, is Chokhmah, is that force that is life the life of the universe. But while some parts of the universe, universe are active, others are dying. It is a transformation. That's what we call Maha Mambantara and Maha Pralaya. So Maha Pralaya means the great night. And Maha Mambantara means the great day. So when the Maha Mambantara great day ends, Krishna dies. But it's not a death as we think here, right? He ceases to exist in order to be. Because death as we think, which is completely this cessation of everything doesn't exist. Everything is just a transformation of forces. So we exist. The gods exist in the universe. But sooner or later, they will cease to exist 
when the great pralaya begins, which is the great night, and then they will pass their existence into a uh, being. To be is better than to exist. So when the universe or any part of the universe ends, Krishna dies and becomes. Do you understand that? You have to grasp it with your intuition. Because that is what we call the absolute. The eternal cosmic common father is. This is what we call a Elohim. He is. But Elohim exists. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. That's the beginning of the cosmic day. But I repeat, in the end, even Elohim dies in the sense that we are teaching. Wouldn't the, the word hidden be better than saying existence or non existence? If the conditions are favorable, then it's being manifest. Conditions are favorable, right? Conditions are favorable they what is hidden, unfortunately, is for us in English the word to explain that. Because it is difficult to explain things of the spirit in this language. English is a really terrible language. We had to borrow from different other languages in order to make an explanation. And you see that uh, this English, I mean, this language that we call English is from Latin, is from German, is, has many words from different parts. It's not an original, like, for instance, Latin, like Greek, like Hebrew, like Chinese, right? but a compound of many things. And that's why you said, as you said, the word uh, maybe hidden is better. Who knows? <laughs> the truth is that that word is hidden for the English speaking people, <laughs> <laughs> but not for all the people that speak other languages. I have the word there, but if I explain it, it will be an explanation in English. <laughs> I had to borrow things here and there in order to explain that, that I understand. So I invite you to learn Chinese. <laughs> I don't know any other language that will help you. <laughs> Do you have another question? Is there truly a chariot driver who is greater than Krishna? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think that dri driver is that is greater than Krishna? His father, <laughs> but he's not Keter. He is uh, Bina. Bina, yeah, because Krishna through Bina becomes to existence. Is Bina not the sister of Krishna? Bina is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember, the Holy Spirit splits in two pieces, yeah. right? Above is what in Christianity is called the White Dove. And below is Mary, Malkut. Malkut is, is the matter, right? In order for that matter to be with consciousness, to be in the universe, the Holy Spirit needs Krishna to descend, needs the consciousness of Christ, Chochmah, wisdom, to penetrate in the universe. So when Krishna descends from his own sphere, into the universe, he does it through Bina, which is the creator, what the Bible called Jehovah Elohim. So Jehovah Elohim is the father, who in this case is that driver. He says, I'm superior than Krishna in the universe because he is 
the vehicle for Krishna to descend into the world. Remember the angel Gabriel talking with Mary. The Holy Spirit will fecundate you, and the one that is being born from you we will call uh, Yeshua, Jesus. That's Krishna descending. So he needs these two polarities, right? And that's the one that is guiding the chariot of Karna, which is a negative aspect of the same force. But Krishna saved the world of Dharma. If you read the Hindu mythology, you will understand that Vina, the Holy Spirit, which is called Shiva, is creator and destroyer. But Vishnu, when descending, becomes Krishna, which is the preserver of life, of religion, of everything good in the universe. And the horses are four, not two. But the maker of the movie didn't have enough money and then <laughs> they put four horses in the chariot. Why the black and white? Black and white what? The horses. Well, this is what he found, right? <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to find the horses, really, the book of Revelation talks about the four horses, right? Which are, one is white, the other is black, the other is red and yellow. Those are the four horses, which represent the four bodies of sin that we have. The physical body is white. Then the vital body is red. The body of desires, which is called Kamarupa, or astral body, is black. And the yellow is the mind. There are the four, the four bodies of any one of us. Physical, vital, astral, and mental bodies. Those are the four bodies of sin that we had to transform. The four horses that we have within. Well, Dharma is precisely that, uh, what we call it. Uh, omnipotence. Yeah. I always, omnipotence. Omnipotence is Dharma. That is what sustains the universe. At the end, of course, that dies. When the great pralaya begins. But during the battle, when you are working in yourself, you have to renounce that. This is Dharma. That's why at the end, you see, he says, I renounce Dharma. I Meaning that he's renouncing his own power. If you don't renounce Dharma at the very end of, of the path, you remain entangled in the karma of the worlds. And then you remain as a cosmo creator. <laughs> Just uh, uh, that's a, that's the th thing, right? You are thinking. This is not a, a matter of thinking. It's a matter of doing. Mm -hmm. Because there are many levels, many levels, many levels, many levels to reach that. To begin, of course, the first step that we have to do is to get out from this hell in which we already are. To get rid of what we call klipas. Because this is our, uh, the fate that is awaiting for us, sinking into the abyss. Just to be rid of that is enough. When you reach that level, then you can 
The thing is that this great poem, Mahabharata, explains everything from the beginning until the end. So that's why I said, watch the first DVD, because there are uh, different versions. One version that uh, they compacted more, only in two DVDs. And, and when I said this, is how you can compact more? It's like trying to... to <laughs> I prefer the three version, the DVD, DVD version is better because you, you see more, right? And you see, it's, it's not easy to explain, but we're explaining this third one, which is the very entrance into the absolute. The other two, we already show it, and it's, for instance, the beginning is precisely the first DVD that we saw that is precisely the level in which we are. That we had to work with the forces of God in order to create within us those elements, which are the brothers. And where are the forces of God that you have to utilize in order to create that? Where are they? In your body. In your body. In your physicality. That's why we receive this physical body. This physical body is called organism because it's made by many organs. And especially, especially the, the, the woman's body shows that we can create life. When a man and a woman are united, life is being created in the womb of the woman. Physical life. So if we take advantage of that energy that created that physical life in the womb of the woman, we can create other things by utilizing the same energy and then create within us something spiritual. And this is precisely what we had to learn. The, that's the very beginning. How to take advantage of the sexual force in the spiritual way. Behold, all religions, without exception, hide all with the secret of sexuality. Unfortunately, they don't know how to control that force. In the Catholic Church, for instance, they become monks and nuns, trying to restrain that force, which is wrong. They have to learn how to transform that with practices of alchemy. That's the way. But in every religion, you see always, they are very, uh, how do you call, uh, particular with the sexual energy. Because that's the root of the, of the work that we have to do. But the secret is teaching in all the books that we, that we uh, have, we have written in the lectures that we teach, as you remember. That's the very beginning, to learn how to transform your sexual energy as a single person. If you are married with your spouse, and that's the very beginning. It's not easy, but it's not impossible. We are doing it. If you wonder how come I understand many things there, well, I have many years doing this, and the same energy is giving me comprehension and understanding. And uh, that is the same energy that you have in your bodies. And I am just a beginner, an ignorant. This is just the very beginning. Yeah? Without the sexual energy, we'll, we, we wouldn't be here talking. All of us came from it. So think about it, meditate about it and start doing something for yourself. That's the only way. So, again, okay. So we, we, we just had a discussion about the, uh, the necessity to renounce Dharma. However, Prior to that, before achieving the resurrection, Eurystheus had to 
choose not to renounce the dog, which was done, how are we to understand? Well, when you reach the level of, that he reached, then you can renounce. Okay. You cannot renounce what you don't have, right? You have to renounce now karma by working in the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness. You know, we have a lot of karma. This planet has a lot of karma. To renounce that is to work in oneself. Once you overcome karma and transform yourself, then you will get dharma. You will save dharma, right? Which is good. But then, uh, in order to enter into that, that we explain here, which is the absolute, you have to renounce dharma. But uh, how are you going to renounce dharma right now when you don't have anything of dharma? <laughs> Not even 1%. <laughs> you cannot renounce. Build it. Create it. Then you renounce. In life, many people said, oh, in order to enter into the direct path, I have to renounce powers. Yeah. And I said, well, I take the direct path. Well, show me your powers. What are you renouncing? You don't have anything. So, so we have to build that first and then to renounce to that. Right? But before that, well, you have to understand. That's why we have books, we have lectures, and many things to, to understand and to have patience. Because it's impossible to understand the whole thing just with one DVD or with one lecture. It takes time. And this is it. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy.